From around 3800 BCE, nearly 6000 years ago, in a place known as Antiquera, situated in southern Spain, is an example of one of the most impressive feats of engineering and manpower from the Neolithic era, also known as the New Stone Age, that being the Dolmen de Menga. This monument challenges the traditional view that construction techniques in the Neolithic era were primitive. Built around 1,000 years before the famous Stonehenge, which used stones weighing up to 30 tons, the Dolmen de Menga is made from 32 massive stones, collectively weighing around 1,140 tons, with the largest stone, one of the capstones, weighing around 150 tons alone, around five times heavier than the largest stone at Stonehenge. A dolmen, sometimes also called a portal tomb, is a single chamber megalithic tomb created with two or more upright stones supporting one or more large horizontal capstones. They are found in many different places around the globe in different styles and were sometimes covered with earth or piles of smaller stones to create a burial mound. Most dolmen are dated to between 4000 and 3000 BCE so are considered a product of the late Neolithic period. The Dolmen de Menga is the most impressive dolmen found to this day. No dolmen has been found built with stones this massive. The 25 meter long chamber has 24 wall stones partially embedded into the ground that fit precisely together, purposely angled slightly inwards to help support the capstones. It has three central pillars that are embedded into the floor for more structural strength, and is topped off with five huge capstones to create the roof, the smallest weighing around 50 to 60 tons and the largest weighing around 150 tons. The entire monument is built into the top of a small hill with the megalithic structure surrounded by a mound of earth and smaller stones to enclose it, which also helps channel water away to prevent erosion of the chamber. The positioning of the dolmen was also extremely important, as from the entrance it looks northeast directly towards the mountain known as Peña de los Enamorados, also known as the Lover's Rock, which depicts a woman's face looking towards the sky. It's quite an amazing sight, as well as being aligned with the summer solstice, where the sun rises from behind the mountain. Then throughout the rest of the year, the sun rises to the right of the mountain at an average of a 22 degree angle to the chamber, casting intricate patterns of light and shadows inside the chamber throughout the year until it aligns with the summer solstice again. All this shows how important these structures were to our ancient ancestors. And although it is thought to be a tomb like many other dolmen, at the rear of the chamber is a well, which meets the water table at around 17 and a half meters deep. No one knows if this well was built during the original construction of the dolmen, but radiocarbon dating of the infill of the well can only be dated back to the early 1700s. So if the well was dug out later, then it may still have originally been a tomb. Or if the well was dug as part of the original construction, then the dolmen's purpose might be something different like some sort of ritualistic temple, for example. Through some deep analysis and work conducted around the site published in the journal Nature in December 2023, and a follow-up paper from August 2024 published on science.org, led by Jose Antonio Lozano Rodriguez from the University of Alcala, we can see how the Dolmen de Menga was likely constructed, where the blocks were quarried from, and how they most likely moved these huge stones into place. As always, I'll provide links to this research in the description below. They identified three quarry locations that matched the composition of the stones used. These quarries were close together west from the dolmen and were only between around 700 and 850 meters from the site and around 50 meters higher in elevation. So this topographical advantage likely aided the transport of the massive stones mostly downhill to the desired location. It is believed that the stones were transported on sledges over a specially designed wooden trackway to minimise friction. And even more impressively, it's explained that the builders designed the monument to be built buried in the ground. So they would dig out trenches and holes where they wanted the wall stones to be located. This allowed them to embed the upright stones into secure foundation sockets where they could be more precisely pulled upright into the correct position and wouldn't risk falling down.
When all the upright stones were in place, the space would be filled back up with earth to the top of the vertical slabs. After the filling was complete, the five gigantic capstones could then be carefully pulled into place on top of the buried support stones, avoiding the need to build large ascending ramps to pull them on top of the vertical stones. When the stones were in place, the earth within the chamber would be excavated, revealing the chamber space and the building would be complete. These capstones were also slightly convex, distributing their weight to the sides and creating the earliest known example of a stress relief arch. The walls slightly angled inwards made a trapezoid shape, where the base of the chamber is wider than the top, giving it much more structural support. The way it all locks together also makes it very resistant to earthquakes. This construction process was clearly very carefully planned and executed. It's extremely impressive imagining that a late Stone Age culture using mainly simple stone tools, wood and rope worked together to create these megalithic tombs. It really outlines a great understanding of stone working and the manoeuvring of large weights. This sheds yet even more light on how clever people were thousands of years ago. In many ways, they were clearly just as smart as we are with the tools and knowledge that they had access to at the time. They could coordinate, plan, problem solve and work together on huge projects that we still find awe-inspiring today. And they didn't even need metal tools or any hint of advanced technology to do the job. For thousands of years our species has been constructing buildings and monuments that would last for millennia to come. Many would ultimately far outlive the culture that initially created them. I think this really helps to show that they may have only had primitive tools at the time, but their methods and understanding were far from primitive. It seems like no coincidence that these advanced practices started appearing during the Neolithic era, which began around 12,000 years ago when the climate started warming. This warming allowed cultures of the Neolithic to grow in population and spread further, with more densely populated communities settling down, practices like agriculture, pottery and textiles were born, which revolutionised the way we could look after and sustain ourselves without having to keep moving seasonally for survival and resources, as we had to do before then to survive as a hunter-gatherer species. This change in lifestyle inevitably led us to experiment with things that would gradually move us to more modern discoveries and technologies. Between the construction of Stonehenge 5,000 years ago and the Great Pyramid of Egypt around 4,500 years ago is around the crossover point from where we consider the Neolithic Age ending and entering into the Bronze Age and onwards. Since our ability to craft more refined metal tools and equipment over time and our advancement of science and knowledge over the last few thousand years, we've been gradually advancing until the modern day. And since entering the silicone or digital age in recent times, we don't seem to be slowing down. In fact, our advancement has just been accelerating more and more as our knowledge and population grows greater. I wonder what our next huge breakthrough in technology will be to push us even farther into the future of humanity. So what do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Well, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. If you'd like to help support my research and projects, please consider joining my Patreon or become a channel member here on YouTube. Have an amazing day and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care of yourselves out there.